In this presentation, I will introduce how to um, incorporate the 3D point source in our SS internal multiple attenuation algorithm for 2D stuff surface. Continue as the as the continue uh, work uh, of the from the last year. Last year we incorporated for us 1D stuff surface. And then this project, uh, different from the project we shown in the previous uh, presentation, focus on the internal multiple attenuation algorithm. And uh, here is the outline for my talk. And uh, I will first give you the motivation of this uh, uh, subject and uh, give you a brief review of the complete uh, 3D SS internal multiple attenuation algorithm. And our reduction of this algorithm will be separated by two parts. In the first part, we will use the cross-line symmetry, and the second part is a further, redu uh, further reduction based on the result from the first part, and by applying a stationary phase for the 2D subsurface. Uh, finally, I will just conclusion. First is the motivation of this subject. Uh, we see that the complete 3D SS internal multiple attenuation which is proposed by the Arujo uh, in 1994 and the Wigline in 1997, can provide the internal multiple events accurately in time and approximately in the amplitude without knowing any subsurface information. Well, this method needs a complete area data set, as we showed before, and high computational capability. So that for a approximately 2D Earth, people usually choose the 2D algorithm, which is assuming a 2D line stars and a 2D Earth. But as we mentioned before, the stars dimension in the real data is close to a 3D point source, which is local. And um, here, if we apply this 2D algorithm, it can generate issues with your data set coming from a 2D point, uh, coming from a 3D point source. This project will start from a complete 3D uh, SS internal multiple attenuation algorithm and reduce the reduce the Earth dimension from 3D to 2D, which remains a 3D point source assumption in the algorithm. Let's take a brief look at this uh, 3D SS internal multiple attenuation algorithm. Here is the algorithm um, which has been proposed uh, by Arudo in 1984 and Wigelai in 1987. And we can see that as an input, uh, this 3D algorithm requires an area coverage of all the receivers for each shot and requires the, uh, the soft to be on the area of this uh, uh, measurement surface, which means it requires a full area coverage of all the receivers and uh, all the sources here. Okay. As we show in this uh, picture here. If your Earth is not is no longer 3D. It's a 2D Earth. What will happen if your Earth only varies along x and z direction, and which means it does not vary along the uh, y direction here? Your data will not will not care about the midpoint of the midpoint uh, between the source and receiver along the y direction, which means the y m here. The data is independent of YM. You can see that if you move this the receiver source pair along this Y direction, you only change the YM, the, you will receive the same data. This kind of symmetry allows us to reduce the data requirement of this, all the sources from an area coverage to a line coverage, inline coverage, as I shown here. Okay. So for each shot, you still need the, the area coverage of all the receivers. Here is the reduced algorithm we obtain. Uh, for the math part, if you are interested, I refer you to my report. And uh, you can see that the input requires the line, um, the line coverage of all the sources and the area coverage of all the receivers for each shot. Please notice that until now, we did not apply any until uh, now we did not apply any approximation. So this is the algorithm without any approximation reduced for the 2D 
to the subsurface. And if we use and um, if you use a stationary phase approximation along the y direction, we can further reduce this uh, data requirement and the algorithm for the 2D subsurface. If we apply this kind of stationary phase approximation uh, along the y direction, will allow us to reduce the data requirement from the receiver side, which means we don't we no longer need the area coverage of all the receivers. We only need the, the receivers on the <coughs> line directions. We reduce this, reduce this. Here, I show you the asymptotic, which means we use the stationary phase uh, approximation, uh, assuming a far field or recording here. We call it asymptotic 3D source to the Earth's SS internal multiple attenuator. We compare the 2D, why do you use the 2D source and 2D Earth's SS internal, uh, internal multiple attenuator? We can see that they, they require the same, uh, they, the data requirement in these two algorithms will be the same, which means they only need the line coverage of all the sources and the line coverage of all the receivers. We, uh, it's called a, really called a 2D line acquisition. And they have almost the same computational cost. The difference is our asymptotic 3D soft 2D Earth attenuator re retains the assumption of a 3D point source because it's reduced from a complete 3D algorithm. For, um, uh, in this preliminary numerical result, um, we set up to evaluate an asymptotic 3D soft to the Earth's SS internal multiple attenuation algorithm. We use a data from a 3D point source and a 1D Earth as the what we consider the 1D uh, the data from a 1D Earth as a special case of uh, the data uh, from the uh, 2D Earth and uh, the data from the 1D Earth have the certain symmetry uh, which can help us uh, save the time and uh, reduce the computational cost. But all the factors in the algorithm remain. So we use this data set, which is shown on the right panel here, a uh, left panel here, sorry, left panel here. And uh, um, using the 3D, the uh, asymptotic 3D source 2D Earth algorithm to do this internal multiple prediction. We can see the result has been shown on the right panel here. Please notice that we plot these two figures in the same scale. So. We can see the energy of the in the prediction mm, is in the same scale as the energy of the original data. After that, we pick up one trace to do the trace comparison. Since the base rate in principle is an internal multiple attenuator on the first order internal multiple, so we only take a look at this first order internal multiple. Here, the right line here represents the internal multiple in our 3D, in our original 3D points of data. And the green line here represents the internal multiple prediction using a SMPAP 3D points of SS internal multiple attenuation algorithm. And this SMPAP algorithm works very well as an internal multiple attenuator, which provides the accurate time here and the approximate amplitude on the on the internal multiple prediction. <laughs> and to do the comparison, <coughs> if we mismatch the soft dimension, again, mismatch the soft dimension in the algorithm and in the data, we use the 2D line stuff as this internal multiple attenuator V3. We will see that we can also get some result to make it visible. We plot these two figures in a different scale. You can see that the scale we used for the internal multiple prediction result is very small. It's, uh, the difference, we can see that we, they have a, a 10 minus 4 <coughs> scale difference. If we plot them in a same scale, you can barely see anything in the prediction result. And if, we, if you use, if you actually pick up one trace to do the trace comparison, you will see that the right line again is represents the 3D point stars data, uh, internal multiple events, 
and the blue line here, because the prediction result is too small, it looks flat. So um, we can conclude that applying the 2D line sets on the 3D point sets data can produce a significantly less effective prediction on the internal multiple at, at MP2. That's our conclusion here. Uh, the first key point in this talk is if we don't do any um, uh, approximation, we, we can reduce the 3D uh, SS internal multiple uh, attenuation algorithm for 2D subsurface by applying a wide direction symmetry. This kind of uh, reduced algorithm needs the lead line coverage of all the sources and for each source, we need the area coverage of the unit servers. But it still reduces a lot because initially you need an area coverage of all the sources and the receivers. The second, in the second bar, we further reduce this uh, algorithm uh, based on the results from the uh, first part. We say, uh, with a, uh, a stationary phase approximation, um, this kind of approximation will lead to uh, the de less demand of the data, which means your, the algorithm, uh, as some type algorithm, only demands the data along the 2D line inline direction, which is a 2D line acquisition of sources and receivers. And the second key point is the preliminary um, numerical results demonstrate that the 3D points of 2D Earth's internal multiple uh, attenuation algorithm supports the effectiveness of predicting the amplitude of the internal multiples in the 3D points of data. And in contrast, applying a 2D lines of algorithm on this, on this data, which means we mismatch the source dimension in the algorithm and the data can make the prediction significantly less effective. Which is, uh, which is consistent with the conclusion we showed in the previous resurface model elimination algorithm. And here is the future work and the documented code delivery. Um, in the future, we'll continue to test the um, SMTAC 3D, uh, South 3D Earth internal model attenuation algorithm on one section of the 2D line of the field data. And also, we will release, uh, we, will, uh, get, we will provide you the documented code um, in this year, uh, December, 20, uh, December uh, 2015. And that's all. Uh, thank you. And uh, I would like to thank all the sponsors uh, for your encouragement and uh, support. And any questions, I will come. Thank you.